the difference between power versus energy. This presentation is intended to introduce the difference between power and energy. It also covers the principles and concepts related to a solar PV plant. And later on, we will do a quick energy calculation for a 1 megawatt solar PV plant. Power. When we speak of a power on a PV system, we are very specific to electrical power as it is the instantaneous measurement that tells you how a system is producing or consuming. In basic electricity, we will find power units is in watts as a product of your current running through it in amps and the potential or voltage drop across it in volts. And it's given by the formula P is equal to V times I. If we are to associate that calculation in real life, we can say that my car's battery can produce 500 amps at 12 volts, which equals to 6 kilowatts of power. Similarly, we can measure power like what your car speedometer is doing as it tells you how fast you're going at a specific point in time. Moving on with energy. When we talk about electrical energy, it is a measurement over a period of time. Unit is in watts per hour or kilowatt hours, meaning you can't think about energy without a duration or a period. Hence, one watt of electrical power maintained for an hour is equal to one watt hour of energy. As an example, I left a 60 watt light bulb on for 30 days, which raised my electrical bill by 43.2 kilowatt hours. That's 60 watts multiplied by 30 days multiplied by 24, as we have 24 hours in a day. That would give us 43,200 watt hours, or simply 43.2 kilowatt hours. Like the odometer in your car, it works in a similar fashion as it tells you how far you've gone. This accumulates over time and it's the same with the accumulator channel on a production meter. Regardless if it is a generation or a consumption meter as it tells you the increasing count of energy. Solar PV plant application. In this section, we will associate power and energy to a PV system. Here, we have a tabular representation of each component. A solar cell has more likely to have 3.5 watts of power under standard test conditions, or STC, and can power up a small light bulb. To know more on the standard test conditions, I'll prepare a separate presentation and add a link here. A module, on the other hand, has nearly 300 watts of output power, again under STC, and similar to the power consumption of your 50-inch plasma TV. A solar panel, which has nearly 5 kilowatts of output power, can be associated to that of a large central air conditioner. If in case you need to understand the difference between a solar module versus that of a solar panel, please check out the video we have for this topic on the top right hand side corner of this video. 
moving on with energy a solar PV plant that has a maximum output power of 1 megawatt peak can produce at least 1.4 to 6 gigawatt hours of energy. PV plant calculation. Let's understand properly the power and energy relationship on a PV system with the help of an example. The solar power calculation of a one megawatt solar power plant can be calculated with several assumptions. First, on any given day, sunlight is between eight to 12 hours only. But as we consider an ideal situation here, let's assume that between that eight hours only four hours of bright sunlight can be achieved, considering overcast. Like in this example, wherein you have your blue bars as your measured AC power on a 15 minute data interval, we can see that not all the time we will achieve one megawatt as the electricity generated would depend on the irradiance as well. We can use this system to calculate the energy generated as it is a product of the installed AC capacity or what they say is system size multiplied by the number of hours of operation at full capacity that is one megawatt times four hours multiplied by 365 days, we will get 1,460 megawatt hours or simply 1.46 gigawatt hours of energy generation. However, there are some degradation and losses on a PV system. The actual solar PV system will produce less power during operation due to some losses, like module degradation, inverter efficiency, soiling, ohmic losses, and thermal losses. We also have event-based losses, which would happen on a yearly or seasonal basis, like shading, curtailment, and those isolated outages. We also have design consideration in which you have some module mismatch, shortfalls in nameplate rating, and what you call over design. Again, these loss factors can vary by season, geographic location, mounting technique, azimuth, and your solar array tilt.